PPC advertising has been around for a while now and has established itself as the primary model for advertising on the web. Of course, PPC advertising is pay-per-click advertising, which basically means that you pay only as an advertiser when someone actually clicks on your ad. This is different from paying for a fixed spot in a magazine or on a website because you only pay when your ad generates views. For the advertiser, this is a very good deal because it essentially means that you only pay when you're successful. An advert that sits on a website not attracting any clicks will actually cost you nothing. And you'll be able to ensure that you get a very high ROI, return on investment. This is even more true if you use CPA advertising, which in many ways is a natural evolution of PPC. CPA actually stands for cost per action or cost per acquisition. In this sense, you only pay for an ad that converts, giving you guaranteed returns on that investment. Well, in reality, you'll still sometimes pay per click, but even then, CPA gives you a figure for how much each action is costing you, allowing you to calculate your precise profit margin. This is the metric that every advertiser should be most interested in. Essentially, this is the point at which the ad becomes profitable. And if you only pay for that, then you have a situation where everyone is guaranteed to win. CPA is a relatively new form of PPC, but it's one that's rapidly catching on for obvious reasons. If you want to evolve your current marketing campaign in a way that can only improve your ROI, and you want to get one step ahead of the competition, then this is something you should be learning. And if that's your plan, then you've come to the right place. This video series will serve as your masterclass in CPA marketing, and will show you how to get set up, how to stack the cards in your favor, and how to scale up your operation for gigantic profits. So, buckle up and let's take a dive into the complex world of CPA marketing. And we'll start in the next video. We've already touched very briefly on the concept of CPA marketing, but what does this term mean in detail? To start with, let's ask the simple question. What is an action? What is an acquisition? Another term that can be used synonymously with these two is conversion. And if you've ever heard of a call to action, then this basically describes the same thing. A call to action is a call to do the thing you want your audience to do, which in the vast majority of cases is to buy a product or sign up to a mailing list. So with CPA marketing, you would first set up your goal or your action, and then you would set up tracking so that you only paid when that thing happened. So for instance, if someone were to click on your advert, get taken to your website, and then buy your product, you would get charged. But if they were to click on your advert and then leave, you wouldn't get charged anything at all. As you might imagine, this is a rather positive situation for you as an advertiser. You see, a click on its own does not guarantee any value for you. If someone clicks on your PPC advert, goes to your website and then is unimpressed with your products and services on offer, you'll have paid for that click and received nothing in return. On the other hand though, if you're only paying for each action, then you will be earning money for every time someone clicks on the advert. So if you can work out that you get $20 for every purchase of your ebook and you're only paying $1 for your CPA, then you know that every click on your advert will earn you $19. This works very well for you because you know you're getting money out of your advertising campaign. And it works very well from the advertiser who's getting paid for your business. Now, here's the thing. CPA marketing doesn't always mean that you pay only when someone buys your product. In fact, that's relatively rare. Instead, with CPA, you will still normally pay per click. That's what makes this you know, still a form of PPC advertising, other than the simple fact that the two are very similar and it's convenient to describe them with the same term. So if you're paying per click, how is that CPA at all? Well, basically, the advertising platform will give you the ability to break down the information and to see when you're actually gaining an acquisition. 
What this means is you can look at the percentage of clicks that are resulting in an acquisition and you can see what you're paying for each of those clicks. So if you're paying one dollar for every 100 clicks and one in every 400 people buys your product then you know that you have a cost per action of four dollars. Is this a concrete and reliable number? While you might worry that this figure is based purely on trends, for any big business that's going to be good enough. If you're getting thousands of clicks a day and the average is calculated on that data, then it is almost always going to hold true. Sure, you'll sometimes see a little deviation from this average as the cost goes up and down, but overall it's going to even out over the long term. This is in fact just the same way that a casino works. They play the odds, but because those odds are on such a large scale and they are slightly tipped in favour of the house, they can still accurately predict their revenue. So now you may be wondering how CPA would work. What is this black magic that allows an advertiser to know whether or not someone has bought your product after leaving your website? And the answer to that is they can use cookies to track the user along with a small line of code normally on the website in question. A cookie is a small file that can be stored on a user's computer via the browser. This allows a website or app to identify that user and to show them their preferences. Cookies are what allow you to automatically stay logged into Facebook for instance. And cookies are also the reason that the adverts that show up in the sidebar on Google are eerily close to all of the things you're interested in. Being looking at holidays? Then a cookie will be stored by that website and they will work with their advertising partners to show you hotel and flight adverts. In the case of CPA, a cookie is used to look at the person who's clicking on your advert. Then, if the user with that identifying information should also try to buy a product on your website, they will have been tracked and the information will be fed back to the advertising platform. In a scenario where you only pay for each acquisition, you would then pay for those clicks only. More likely, the information will be fed back to your overall metrics along with those clicks that didn't yield a result and you could then use this to calculate your CPA. So, who are the advertisers and publishers? Who earns from all of this? We'll look at the different CPA providers, called platforms, in detail a bit later on, but for now, suffice to say that the platforms tend to be run by really big companies and websites such as Google and Facebook. If you use CPA through Google or Facebook, then your advert will be likely to appear on Google or Facebook respectively. In this case, of course, that company will be paid for each click. In other cases, it's possible to use CPA marketing across multiple websites. Google AdWords is Google's advertising platform that shows ads right on its search engines. But Google AdSense is a platform that shows adverts on the websites of participating publishers. So, for instance, if you're someone who is selling a protein shake, you can use Google AdSense to have your adverts appear on websites about fitness. When you pay for your clicks or acquisitions, that money will then go to Google and the publisher. When paying only for your acquisitions or leads rather than per click, you may need to know what scrubbing and shaving means. Scrubbing means that advertisers, in other words you, don't have to pay for invalid or duplicate leads. So if you're paying for every person who signs up for your newsletter, then scrubbing means looking for instances where the same person has signed up twice or where they've signed up with a fake email. You then need to go back and not pay for that data. Likewise, if someone were to buy your product but their card was declined, you would then need to scrub that data to ensure that you are really only paying for each acquisition. And here is where things can sometimes get a little complicated. Meanwhile, shaving means that the advertiser is trying to be more selective about their leads and scrubbing leads that should be valid. This, of course, is unfair to the publishers. In the next video, we'll talk about CPA versus other forms of marketing. 
In this video, we're going to compare CPA to other forms of marketing. Now, compared with regular PPC marketing, CPA is much more goal-oriented and gives you a way to calculate the ROI from each and every click. And this makes a lot of sense if the page you're sending your viewers to is one where they can buy products. They will click on the link and from there they might buy your product, sign up to your service or otherwise spend some money with you. CPA also makes a lot of sense when you have another clear target in mind. The other obvious example here is getting people to sign up to a mailing list. In this scenario, CPA makes a lot of sense because, again, you're paying for the goal that you hope to achieve. While you won't profit in the short term from people signing up to your list, you should be able to monetize those emails later and you'll be able to eventually get your returns. It's a longer process, but the end result should be the same. But there are some situations where CPA doesn't make as much sense or isn't as important. For instance, sometimes advertising will be used simply to increase awareness of a product or a brand. And in that case, the target can't really be measured. If you think of the advertising that you often see on TV, a lot of it won't have any clear call to action at the end. In other words, they don't tell you how much the product costs or where to buy it. They just make it look good. The idea here is to create a positive association and or awareness for the product in your mind. Then, when you're out shopping and you see that chocolate bar or detergent or toothpaste, the hope is that you'll be more likely to pick it up. Increasing brand awareness has much more value than that though and will continue to reward the companies investing in that marketing for years or decades to come. If your objective is similar, you know, simply to get people to know the name of your business, then CPA might not be the best choice, simply because you can't actually measure how aware someone has become of a brand or how impressed they've been by an advert. It's worth noting, though, that in order to make a brand a household name through conventional advertising, you would have to sink a huge amount of money into your campaign, and this is generally more of an investment than most small businesses can afford. CPA marketing, on the other hand, is suitable for smaller businesses because you'll know that you're making returns on all your advertising, thus reducing the amount of time until you break even. That said, the more money you can invest into your marketing, the more accurate the data describing your CPA will be. Remember, this is based on averages. The savvy internet marketer watching this may have noticed that CPA actually has a similarity with another type of promotion, affiliate marketing. Indeed, CPA is something like the missing link between PPC and affiliate marketing, and it has many of the advantages presented by each. Affiliate marketing is basically the process of paying commissions to marketers that promote your product. So, say you have an online course that you're promoting. With affiliate marketing, you could give out special URLs to marketers that they can use to refer sales to you. From here, you would then automatically give them a percentage of every sale they brought in. If they were to earn you five sales, then you would pay them something between 40 and 60% for each of those sales. The higher the percentage, the more people would likely work to drive leads your way. Likewise, you can also use affiliate marketing to pay people for generating leads on your behalf. Affiliate marketing then is in fact a form of CPA because you're only paying out each time someone actually makes you a sale or a lead. Again, you're paying action per lead. There are subtle differences between traditional forms of CPA and affiliate marketing, but we'll consider both options throughout this series. As a general rule though, affiliate marketing tends to mean giving away a larger cut of your profits, but for a more guaranteed and steady ROI. It also gives the affiliate marketers the freedom to promote your product as they see fit, as opposed to publishing an advert that you designed. Generally, affiliate marketing works better for higher ticket items and for companies who are less concerned about presenting a particular image. 
There are a lot of options to play around with here and finding the right system is one of the most important steps in ensuring that your campaign is successful. And that's what we'll be looking at in the next video. When it comes to CPA marketing, there are a few different options to consider in terms of the precise business model you want to follow and the specific platform you want to use. As we've already seen, sometimes CPA can mean you literally only pay when you get a sale, called CPS, or when you gain a lead, CPL. At other times though, CPA simply means that you calculate what your CPP, cost per click, is costing you per sale. In other words, how much of what you're spending on clicks is being translated into sales and is that still profitable for you? On the face of it, CPA, and particularly CPL, is going to seem like the best choice. After all, why wouldn't you want to be able to stop paying for all those clicks that aren't earning you any money? Of course, it's not so simple though, or no other form of marketing would be as popular. One downside of a purely CPA advertiser is that they tend not to be the larger options. In other words, if you want to advertise on Google or Facebook, you're still probably going to have to pay for your clicks. Meanwhile, the options for pure CPA tend to look a little cheaper in comparison and some have a slightly spammy feel that can be concerning for the Greenhorn advertiser. Another reason to pick PPC with CPA functionality is that you'll usually pay less overall. Of course, platforms that only charge per lead are going to make money on considerably fewer clicks and in order to make up for that, they have to charge more for each of them. Let's look at some of the different types of CPA platforms, how to choose the right one and how to get started. The first pure CPA network to look at is Max Bounty. Max Bounty was formulated in 2004 and has quickly become one of the more popular CPA platforms, allowing advertisers to set up purely CPA, CPL and CPS campaigns. Take a look at the site, which you'll find here at maxbounty.com, and you know it feels somewhat concerning. At the time that I'm making this video, a sign-up bonus of $1,000 is on offer, which right away makes the site feel a little more like a shady binary options broker or a gambling site than a legitimate advertising platform. That said, if I click here on Advertisers, that said, the write-up for advertisers does hit all the right notes, and it says here, performance-based marketing is the perfect alternative for advertisers frustrated with the expensive and non-guaranteed results of CPM and CPC advertising. The CPA model, cost per action, is the optimal method of buying online advertising because the advertiser defines the actions they are seeking from a surfer in advance a sale on the website, a form being filled, a download, etc., and only pays when that action occurs. In this model, publishers are encouraged to deliver high-quality targeted traffic because they only earn revenue when that action is generated. Beyond the norms of what defines cost per action marketing, Max Bounty's nine-year history as a CPA network enables us to stand above our competitors on the following manners. Affiliate review process. All affiliates seeking entry into the Max Bounty network are passed through an extensive quality assurance review process. Historically, 84% of all publisher applications are turned down and denied access to our advertisers. This helps limit fraud and ensures our traffic quality remains high. Aggressive compliance. Max Bounty is known for taking a stand against fraudulent publishers and deceptive sources of traffic. Our experience assists us to locate and weed out those rogue publishers, again ensuring the highest caliber of traffic quality. Global Reach Our network has over 16,000 affiliates that span all forms of traffic generation and include email list owners, search engine marketers, contextual traffic firms, social media experts, and co-registration delivery specialists. This wide-reaching group means we can successfully generate traffic for nearly every country across the globe. 
whether your ad campaign is for American trial-based offers, Belgian surveys, Australian dating or Swiss ringtones, we have matching affiliates. And then you click on the link here to become an advertiser. Max Bounty allows the publishers to hand select which campaigns they want to run. As with other forms of CPA marketing, the advertiser needs to place a small bit of code onto their page, called a pixel, and the sales are tracked via cookies. Max Bounty does not accept affiliate schemes, only the regular CPA model. The setup process is a little awkward though, and while it's good that you need to be vetted, advertisers actually have to speak on the phone in order to set up their account, and this is not a common practice with the likes of Google. Advertisers also need to carry out scrubbing themselves. From the perspective of publishers, there are some concerning stories during the rounds on the likes of the Warrior Forum, a forum for website owners and marketers, and you can find it here at warriorforum.com, that the network will sometimes ban people the day before they're due to get paid. Then again, such reports can often be found, and in many cases there will actually have been a violation of the platform's guidelines. And meanwhile, there are lots of success stories on the Warrior Forum surrounding Max Bounty too, although they're mostly from the perspective of publishers, not advertisers. So, in short, can you trust Max Bounty as a legitimate CPA network? Many people do and are very happy with it, but others report less positively on the network. Ultimately, you unfortunately need to make up your own mind and then try the platform yourself. The next site I want to show you is AdSend Media. AdSend Media, which you'll find here at adsendmedia.com, is another site that works similarly to Max Bounty. Although actually AdSend Media has a much more professional looking site, which is a little bit more reassuring. AdSend Media has an affiliate referral commission of 3%, and what this means is that you pay 3% of your sale for each click, you know, which isn't bad. AdSend Media also has a wide range of options, allowing you to pay per install, per sale, per video, or per lead. The site is also quite big, and according to the site, they served over 1 billion ads between 2010 and 2014. They have over 20,000 offers and the reviews on the Warrior Forum are again mixed to good. The next network to look at is AdGate Media and there are some issues around this particular site. Here is one review of AdGate Media. As we are providing best CPA network daily on this site and here is one more great CPA network which name is AdGate Media. AdGate Media is a private CPA incentive network. They have lots of offers to promote and the conversion rate is very consistent. AdGate Media is run by veterans of the incentive marketing industry. AdGate Media is another great network which is also working to help people to make their own comfortable living. Oh dear. Not exactly a high quality review there and it's also not uncommon to find reviews like this. And you can read more about this on onlinenetreviews.com and there are other reviews online about AdGate Media that are word for word the same as this one, which again doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. And, you know, as I was saying, it's not uncommon to find reviews like this. Why? Because sites like these often pay commission for their sign-ups and this is part of the reason that it's so hard to find reliable information on them that doesn't appear biased. Then again though, AdGate Media actually has a rather professional looking website, which is a good start, and claims to generate 50,000 leads per month. They also state that they've managed campaigns for the likes of Skype, Livono, eHarmony and Hotels.com. They have the ability to target by device and by location and this is a useful feature. The company is small in terms of staff but the reports about their trustworthiness are generally positive and you can find out more here at AdGateMedia.com. The next site I want to tell you about is CPALead.com. 
CPA Lead describes itself as an affiliate marketing platform despite its name. Established in 2006, it has a relatively good reputation within the CPA sphere and they appear to take fraud and non-compliance very seriously. If you click here on the Advertisers tab, you can see here it says, Is fraud or non-compliance an issue? Did you know that CPA Lead is the only CPA network that has been praised by multiple governing bodies, big brand businesses, national and state legal authorities for excellence in both compliance and fraud prevention? At CPA Lead, we don't believe in risking the business of our advertisers and support that statement by providing an unparalleled level of security. With your business on the line, you need to be able to trust your traffic sources and CPA Lead continues to be the only CPA network to receive such high praise in this category. With CPA Lead, publishers will tend to publish offers, which can be for apps, for dating, for health and beauty, for insurance and so on. As the advertiser, you pay the commission when you generate a lead from one of those publishers. In that way, it's much more similar to affiliate marketing. And finally, there's ProLeads Media. ProLeads Media, which you can find here at ProLeadsMedia.com, uh, is another of the less respectable looking CPA networks and is relatively young, being formed only in 2010. The site has a referral commission of 3% and offers CPA, CPL, CPS and CPC marketing campaigns. It offers real-time tracking but the site is marred by low resolution images and a lack of information. There are plenty more CPA networks out there which include the likes of Envious Media, AdWork Media, CPA Trend, Mundo Media and more. Just be wary. As we've seen there are some low quality and shady networks out there and if you use those you might find your ads appearing on very low quality websites which could damage your reputation. Adgate Media AdSend Media and CPA Lead are generally the more trustworthy CPA platforms to try. Whereas Max Bounty may also be a safe option despite the somewhat low quality websites. Whatever you decide, make sure you do your research first. At the same time, expect to be dealing with a smaller company, to need to speak over the phone and to potentially have a hard time getting your site accepted. Or choose another option altogether and we'll talk about some of them in the next video. In this video we're going to talk about the more straightforward affiliate platforms. These are tools that simply allow you to take a product and sell it from a landing page while inviting as many other marketers as you like to join in and help you make sales for a cut of the profits. This is affiliate marketing not CPA marketing but the two are functionally similar in so far as you'll be paying out only for successful transactions. Note that in some cases your link and product won't actually be placed on your own site but rather in the storefront of the network. Nevertheless it's still a way to pay only for sales if that is your objective. When it comes to affiliate platforms there are three big options to choose from. The three big affiliate platforms are Clickbank, JVZoo and WSO Pro which is operated by Warrior Plus. So what's the difference between them? One notable difference right away is that WSO Pro is actually part of a forum, the Warrior Forum that we discussed already. WSO stands for Warrior Special Offers and essentially it allows you to sell to members of that forum and to let other members of that forum promote your product too. This gives you a very large number of potential customers and potential affiliates to sell to, all of whom have an interest in earning money online. If you're selling something that's in this niche, such as an ebook or a course on web design or digital marketing for instance, then you'll find this a very good place to sell. WSO Pro will also work especially well for those people that are already active members of the Warrior Forum community. 
If you've built a reputation there as someone who's knowledgeable and helpful, then this will help you gain extra sales as people won't feel as if they're buying from a stranger. JVZoo and ClickBank, meanwhile, work independently of other sites or services. This is a good thing in so far as it means you have a larger audience to pick from, but it also means a less direct route to market. Of the three, ClickBank was one of the first big affiliate networks and it's very well known as a result. However, it's dropped the ball somewhat and hasn't really updated itself as much as it should have. In many ways, the interface and options are dated and slow going and it's a lot more difficult to set up. On the other hand, JVZoo is very easy to get started with and to integrate with an autoresponder. For those unfamiliar with the term, an autoresponder is a tool for sending out emails that's used by email marketers. This then means that you give your affiliates the ability to sell your product or referred leads via email, which can result in a large volume of traffic to your site. JVZoo also makes it very easy to set up sales funnels and to create other things that make life easier for your marketers. And what makes life easier for your marketers is likely to drive more sales to your products and items. One of the biggest considerations here though is the price. Here, WSO Pro is the most affordable option, followed by JVZoo and then ClickBank. Of the three, JVZoo is the best all-rounder, but if you're already a member of the Warrior Forum and you're selling a product that's in the make money online niche, you'll be well suited to WSO Pro. That said, all of these platforms do somewhat prefer products that are in the digital marketing niche or industry. You can also use Google or Facebook to do your CPA marketing, and for most people, these will still be the best choices. Of course, Google AdWords is a PPC advertising platform and you'll still have to pay per click. However, the fact that you can track your CPA means that you can ensure that you're still making conversions and you can see how much you're paying for them. While this doesn't protect you as much from an unsuccessful ad, you can quickly make changes to ensure that you start making money. What's more, Google has some powerful tools such as automatic bidding that ensures that your ad will always be getting you the best rates for CPA. This way, you can get Google to literally do your bidding. At the same time, you'll be working with a much larger and much more respected publisher. You'll be seen by infinitely more potential customers and you'll be able to closely control how your advert looks. So how do you go about using CPA with Google and what does it look like? To do this, you will go to set up a Google ad as normal and then select automated CPC when setting up the campaign. When you create a Google ad, you basically tell Google how much you're willing to pay for each click. This then also dictates how regularly your ad will be shown to Google's visitors and the more you're willing to pay, the more often your advert will be displayed instead of other competing ads. You can also set a budget, which is the maximum amount you're willing to pay, so that you don't need to worry about paying more than you can afford. With automated bidding, you're essentially telling Google to tweak how much you pay per click in order to gain you the maximum number of clicks. Or, in our case, we're going to tell Google to tweak the bidding automatically to get us the very best conversion rates. To do this, you'll need to set up a Google Analytics account, and then you'll need to set up a goal. A goal is basically a page on your website which can be the thank you page after a purchase or the email sign up page. When your visitor reaches that page, this will be considered a conversion. Now select Enable Enhanced CPC and then the Focus on Conversions box. Now you'll be telling Google to automatically tweak your advert in order to optimize the cost per acquisition. Google gives you the option to look at your ROAS, which is the return on ad spending. This basically tells you how much you're earning back for the amount you're spending on your adverts, again letting you very closely control your CPA. Note that in order to get this information, you'll need to make 30 conversions in 30 days in order to provide Google with the right amount of data. While you aren't actually paying based on CPA with Google, the fact that you can accurately track it means that you're essentially still able to approach AdWords as you would do a CPA platform. In doing so, 
you can benefit from a number of advantages that are unique to Google AdWords and that have made this arguably the most popular advertising platform on the Internet. Google AdWords, of course, shows adverts on the SERPs. These are the search engine results pages and to do this you can choose to target any given search term. A search term is something along the lines of buy hats online or something similar that people are likely to search for when they're looking for your products. This is a very smart way of advertising, of course, because it means you'll be targeting people who are interested in your products and who are actively looking to buy said products at the time that they see your ad. And you can see some Google AdWords ads here. Google AdWords also comes with a huge variety of other awesome features that let advertisers profit even more. For instance, AdWords gives you access to remarketing that allows you to target people who have previously been to your site and shown an interest in your products. AdWords also lets you target people based on location to ensure that they are able to hire your services if they are locally based, and it lets you use negative keywords in order to exclude some search terms from showing your website. By combining all of these features with CPA, Google gives you a very flexible way to control your advertising campaign and to see how this directly impacts on your percentage of conversions. Facebook also offers a CPA option that works differently from Google or the likes of Max Bounty. Like Max Bounty or Ascend Media though, Facebook only charges you for successful actions rather than for each click. Of course, Facebook has a big advantage over Max Bounty or AdSend Media in terms of the sheer amount of people you can reach, the control you have over the ads, and the reputation of the publisher. But before you get too excited and assume that Facebook is the perfect solution to all your CPA worries, bear in mind that Facebook is rather specific about what it considers to be an action. In other words, you can't use Facebook to track actual purchases of your product, generally, nor can you use it to track the number of people who sign up to your mailing list. Yeah, really. Instead, Facebook lets you choose from a number of goals for your adverts, which include Canvas app installs, mobile app installs, off-site link clicks, offer claims, and page likes. Now, the savvy among you may have noticed that CPA for off-site link clicks is basically just, well, CPC, so that's not all that exciting. But if you are thinking of using AdSend Media, for instance, to get charged on a per-installation basis, then immediately you can see that Facebook is just as capable a tool for doing that, which will actually help you reach a much broader audience. And here's an exciting bit of news. You can actually use Facebook CPA for paid apps. That means, theoretically, you can have a direct profit for every click and essentially pay Facebook on a commission basis. There are a few problems with this strategy though. For starters, Facebook itself is free, which makes it a relatively poor place to try and find customers willing to pay for apps. At the same time, the cost of the app isn't displayed, which is intended to increase the CTR for free apps. And finally, it's a cold sale, despite being targeted. Still, it's certainly something worth trying out. Also interesting to note, of course, is the fact that you can use offer claims through Facebook, which is another direct form of CPA. This way, you get paid when someone chooses to redeem a special offer. This means you can run a 20% off sale for your product or service and then get direct CPA through Facebook. Potentially, this method could be highly lucrative. And finally, if you look at CPA for page likes, this can be considered somewhat similar to CPL, you know, cost per lead. Getting a page like gives you a lead in a sense that you can try to convert your page likes to emails. Note though that a page like, although valuable, is not as useful as having an actual email address. Apart from anything else, when you update your Facebook page, it will only be seen by about 2% of your viewers. In order to actually get a post seen, you have to pay for a page post ad and that means you're essentially paying to contact the list that you paid to build. Mm. Uh, then again though, Facebook marketing gives you a lot of advantages that you only get from using a big platform with lots of powerful tools. You get highly advanced tracking and statistics that let you see a graph showing your clicks, your likes, your conversions and so on for a particular ad. 
Like Google AdWords, Facebook also lets you target your users very precisely, albeit in a different way. Unlike using AdWords, you can't reach people who are actively shopping online, which is a disadvantage. On the other hand though, you will be able to target people who are a certain age, who have a particular job title, who are married, who have particular interests, etc. etc. At this point, your head may be reading a little with all the options and all the different types of CPA marketing available. This is a very powerful tool indeed for directly creating conversions for your products. And if you get it right, it's one of the only ways to guarantee returns. But unfortunately, it's also one of the slightly more complicated forms of marketing. So now let's recap on the different options you have available to you and who each is likely to be the most useful for. First of all, you have the option of going purely CPA with something like Max Bounty, AdGate Media, AdSend Media or CPA Lead. These charge you only for each acquisition and put your ads onto the websites of thousands of participating advertisers. On the positive side, this option means you don't pay for unsuccessful ads. At the same time, you have people actively pushing your ads because those ads are incentivized. This is also called incentive marketing and this makes a big difference to the way that your ads get pushed. But, at the same time, this type of advertising is still relatively young. The oldest platforms have only been around since the mid-2000s and they've yet to perfect their services. To sign up as an advertiser, you're going to need to go through a lengthy process involving speaking on the phone in many cases and even then you may be rejected. Once you're in, you'll find you don't know how well you can trust the platform or your advertisers to represent you and you may lose some control over the way your brand is represented. The overall audience you reach will be smaller compared with using AdWords or Facebook and you'll probably pay bigger overheads. You also need to consider scrubbing and shaving and the risk of your offer not being picked up by any publishers. This is an interesting prospect but right now it's far from a perfect experience. Who is this right for? Well, this type of advertising seems most popular among dating sites, legal and financial services, software and app developers, and perhaps those selling digital products. For a startup willing to invest some time into this process, and with a relatively high ticket item to sell, it could be lucrative. Next we have affiliate marketing platforms. These are the likes of WSO Pro, JVZoo and ClickBank. These allow you to sell products, largely digital, and to have a legion of marketers to help you do so for a commission. This is the ultimate in incentivized marketing because often you'll be offering 40 to 60 percent and the kinds of marketers you recruit will be full-time digital marketers that use email marketing, landing pages, PPC, even perhaps CPA, and some other strategies to really push your products. This can lead to a huge amount of sales and a truly passive income as you sleep. And if it's not successful, then it won't have cost you a single cent. But again, you have risks. For starters, affiliate marketing means giving away the biggest cut of your profits. It also means losing a lot of control over what you're selling. If you've ever come by a landing page that uses aggressive sales tactics with poor spelling, then there's a good chance they were selling an affiliate product. This way, you're opening up your product to be represented by anyone, and that can do serious harm to your reputation. What's more, affiliate marketing seems to very much favor the internet marketing niche. If you have a book on how to make money from PPC, then this will probably do very well on JVZoo. If you have a book on fitness though, it will be less popular. And if you're selling a garden fork, well, then you're just wasting your time. Finally, you have the option of Facebook or Google for your CPA. Now, neither of these are true CPA marketing in that they don't offer you the option to be charged only when someone buys your product. You'll still be paying per click for the most part and that means that you aren't actually guaranteed ROI. Facebook and Google ads only end up in one place, the site of the respective publishers. Furthermore, because you aren't incentivizing a marketer, you find that you don't have the power of hundreds or thousands of marketers behind your product. 
If you used affiliate marketing or true CPA, then you might find that those marketers use Google and Facebook on your behalf even. But Facebook and Google do allow you to see precisely what your CPA is as in how much you're being charged for each sale or lead. This is good enough and if anything, it simply incentivizes you to work harder on your ad and your bidding strategy to ensure that you're doing this right. And with automated bidding on Google, that's already handled for you. Facebook, meanwhile, does give you the option to pay based on certain actions, and in some cases, this can lead to direct profit. What's more, Facebook and Google give you a plethora of tools for targeting specific audiences and for tracking your success. They also give you complete control of the look of your ad and where it's showing, and they allow you to immediately stop the ad. Another big advantage of Google and Facebook is that they let you sign up immediately, unlike something like Max Bounty, without having to make phone calls or prove yourself. If you have a small business or an e-commerce store, then this is probably the form of CPA marketing for you. As I just touched on there, tracking your sales is very important, and I'll go into more depth about it in the next video. When you use any CPA marketing platform, it should give you some kind of tracking facility. This will give you the ability to see data and statistics for your adverts so that you can see how well they're performing. When you're paying per click, this is particularly important so you can ensure that you're getting a good amount of ROI for your ads. On Google and Facebook, you'll be able to see your actual CPA, whereas in other platforms, you might need to set this amount yourself. Other things you'll be able to see with most of these tools include how often your ad has been viewed, and this is called impressions, and this will likely be somewhat correlated with how much you're paying per acquisition. The more advanced platforms also might let you see aggregated data. In Facebook, for instance, you can find this by clicking on advanced data. From here you can see the age, sex, location and more of your viewers. Also available in Facebook is something called frequency and this basically tells you how often the same people are seeing your ad. This is an important one to keep an eye on because, of course, if the same people keep seeing your ads, they're eventually like to have either bought your item already or they're completely uninterested in doing so. On the other hand, this might not matter so much if what you're selling is something you can sell multiple times, you know, like a chocolate snack, for example. Other figures include CTR, which is your click-through rate, and this tells you how often people are actually clicking on your ads. So if you have a lot of impressions but you don't have many clicks, your click-through rate will be low. If nearly everyone clicks on your ads who sees them, then your CTR will be high. CTR is a particularly important stat because it is one that most closely correlates with the effectiveness of your ad. In other words, is your advert compelling enough to attract attention and then get someone to want to click? If not, ask yourself what you could do to change it. CPM, meanwhile, is cost per impression and this tells you how much you're paying for your advert to show. Some advertising networks can actually charge per impression, but more likely this figure will be worked out based on your CPP, CTR and impressions. As mentioned earlier, you should also be able to see a ROAS, which is Return on Ad Spend. If you're using a strictly CPA platform or setup where you pay only for actions, then you'll ideally want to increase your impressions, your CTR and your ROAS. However, if you're paying per click, then the ideal scenario would be for your CTR to go down and your ROAS to stay the same or go up. In other words, when you're paying per click, you want to drive away clicks that aren't going to convert. You want to discriminate when bringing visitors to your site because not all of them are going to be worth any money to you. If you can decrease your CTR while keeping your ROAS the same, then that will mean that you're actually targeting your visitors more accurately and this will cause your CPA to go down, which is a good thing because it means you're paying less per sale. I know this all sounds a bit confusing, but as long as your ROAS is going up, you can be sure you're generally improving. 
and if you're paying on a purely CPA basis then as long as your clicks are going up your ad will be performing well. You should also be able to look at your historical data for your adverts and see whether your CTR and ROAS are going up or down. At the same time, you can then correlate this with changes you might have made to your campaign, you know, such as your bidding strategy or perhaps the ad text. Either way, this will have a direct or indirect effect on how many people are clicking on your ads and in turn you can use this data to run tests. The idea is that you eventually evolve the adverts to perform optimally, thereby maximizing your clicks and your profits. Some sites will also allow you to run split tests. A split test basically means that you run two different versions of an advert at the same time. For example, you might have two versions of your heading text or the ad body text and you can then see which one of these performs best. By doing that, you can make sure that every change you make is a positive change that will increase your clicks, impressions and conversions. Just make sure that you run your split tests for long enough to collect the right amount of data. If you draw premature conclusions based on just a few clicks, then you won't be able to ensure that it was the difference in the ad that was having the effect. You know, it could just have been a coincidence. In the next video, we'll talk about creating your ad. Depending on the platform that you use, you may have to create an ad or you might leave this in the hands of the publishers. On the sites where you do create your own ads, the CTR is going to be very much in your hands, as is the targeting for your viewers. Again though, it's worth noting that the specifics of your ad design are going to depend somewhat on your goals and the type of platform you're using. If you're paying only for conversions, then your objective is to get as many people to your site as possible, which means that you will maximize the opportunity to make sales. If you're paying per click though, that strategy would be expensive. So instead, you should be aiming to focus only on highly targeted traffic. Partly you would do this using the filtering options we've already looked at, and on Facebook that means targeting your ads based on the demographics, and on Google it means choosing the right keywords and or using negative keywords. For the ads themselves though, you want to make sure that your ad text is catering very specifically to the type of audience that you're hoping to reach. So for example, this might mean saying something like, fitness ebook for $30. Notice how the price of the ebook is right in the text. That way, you're able to ensure only people who might potentially be interested in buying an ebook for that much money will click. If a viewer is the kind of person who would never normally buy a digital product, they'll be put off by the ad and you won't waste your money on that visitor. If your objective is to maximize the CTR of the number of people seeing your ads, then you need to use bold statements that focus on your USPs. USPs, of course, are unique selling points and these are the things that you're offering through your product. Is your line of t-shirts the best possible quality for the price? Then that's what you want to say. Does your app make it much easier to organize notes? Then focus on that. Another useful tip is to try and allay fears that your buyers might have. A lot of people still feel nervous when buying online because they think they're going to have to spend ages signing up, then worry whether or not the item will come in the post. Thus, phrases like, quick sign up and next day delivery, can be very helpful as they tell your audience that they'll be able to have the product that they like in their hands tomorrow. Full money back guarantee is another useful one for the same reason. Another option is to try and encourage people to click on your link by using curiosity. This is one of the reasons that those one weird tip to lose body fat adverts are so effective. You can't help but be curious as to what that one weird tip might be. Now you might try to rip off this idea with something like, you'll never believe how much money you can save with this new strategy. Also in your arsenal is the ability to use images to try and grab attention. This is an option with most CPA networks and it's a very important part of any advert. 
moving images, colourful images and particularly images with people in them are all very useful for attracting attention. Using attractive people is a particularly good way to do this. Make sure your image is high definition and pay for a designer if you don't have the skills yourself. This will make a big difference in helping your product or service look more professional and trustworthy and it can help to dispel fears that you might be a scam artist. Actually though, the advert itself is only one part of the process. If you really want to be successful, then you'll need to create a landing page that is effective in converting visitors into buyers. And we'll talk about that in the next video. In this video, I want to talk about landing pages. So what is a landing page? Essentially it's the page you're going to be sending your visitors to and where they can sign up to your mailing list or buy your product. This might be an e-commerce store but more often than not you'll have created a specific sales page just to try and sell your product. You'll likely have encountered these before on your own travels around the web and may have noted some common themes. For starters, sales pages tend to be long and narrow and they don't have any other navigational elements such as menus. The reason for this is that it a encourages people to scroll down the page, which actually makes them feel more committed to buying, and b prevents them from clicking away to any other parts of your site. These sites are easy enough to design, but if you want to automate the process, you can use a tool like Optimize Press, which will also help you to easily add a checkout, although of course you'll slightly increase your overheads. And you can read more about this at OptimizePress.com. At the same time, you also need to think about the sales copy that you're going to put here, and you can either write this yourself or you can get someone from Upwork, which you can find here at Upwork.com. This used to be called Odesk. Or from Elance, which you can find here at Elance.com to do it for you. The idea here is to make your product sound amazing and to compel the audience to buy right away. To do this, you'll likely start by using the ADA structure. This stands for Awareness, interest, desire, action. And it's that last one that you pay out for. In other words, you have to guide someone from not knowing what the product is to feeling like they really need it. A useful tip when doing this is to use a narrative structure. Use a story to make your sales page stand out. We're naturally inclined to read stories and it's hard for us to look away without reaching the end. Another tip is to appeal to facts and figures throughout and to make yourself likeable. These are both important pillars of persuasive writing. Throughout your text, always focus on your value proposition and the emotional hook. This means thinking about how your product or service will make life better for the person buying from you. Don't focus on what your product is, but on what it does and how that makes people feel. Remember, you don't sell hats, you sell warm heads. If you're selling a book on making money, then paint the picture and get your reader to imagine having their own private yacht and no debt, you know, that sort of thing. Questions also help to engage your audience more because they make them reflect on what they're reading. Finally, when trying to secure the sale, make sure you give people a reason to buy quickly rather than going away to think about it. Now you can do this by creating scarcity, for example saying you only have a limited supply, or by applying time pressure with a limited time special offer. Some sellers will use something called a dime sale, which basically means that your product will go up every time someone buys it. And this can be very effective for driving sales, but do check on how this will impact your CPA platform and your profit margins. In the final video of this series, I'll summarize what we've learned so far, and I'll put together a CPA success formula that you can start acting on right away.